<laughs> Hello, everybody. It is Friday right now, which means, hold on a second, guys. Hold on. Let's see if this works. No pants Friday. No pants Friday. No pants. No pants. No pants Friday. What do you think? Is that pretty good? I kind of like. <laughs> I kind of like our theme song. <laughs> Could you guys actually hear that? I I have not figured out how to like play the sound like on my actual computer so that you guys can hear it because I apparently well I haven't really spent that much time trying to figure it out. But anyway, so you I have, have to playing, have them send you the file. And yeah, so I have it playing like through. Well, no, I have the file on my computer. It's a matter of having the sound that's going through my computer soundboard play out there. So. Mm -hmm. Tell me, guys, if you could hear the song. Wait, I'm going to do it one more time. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. No Pants Friday. No Pants Friday. No Pants. No Pants. No Pants Friday. Pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, I like that there's actually a theme song. So Dana, our friend Dana, uh, she signed her husband up for um, playing, recording the punk version of our theme song. <laughs> Her husband Johnny Rocks is uh, is is a musician. He's a guitar yeah. player and clearly a singer as well. Uh, and yeah, he's a professional musician. He's been doing it for a million years, and he's really good. And he made us our song. <laughs> he made a couple versions actually, but that's our favorite one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Little and actually, uh, so Christiane actually uh, like rewrote the lyrics to "That's What Friends Are For" mm -hmm. for the No Pants Friday song. He uh, here's the thing, Christiane. Johnny actually recorded it. Um, you couldn't really hear the lyrics very well, so I might be able to get him to do it again. I mean, it's obviously it's a longer song, but seriously, we were laughing so hard. Yeah, uh, it was pretty amazing. But he you're... took your words and put it to he actually like played the music a punk version of "That's What Friends Are For" with guitar. It was it was pretty funny. Yeah, except for it's what that's what pants are for. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I... <laughs> we may or may not have a copyright infringement issue, so I'm not sure if we can play that. But you can't hear it the way he made it, so we've got to uh, see if he can do it again for us. But it was pretty funny. Yeah, pretty much. Um, okay, so it is Friday, which means it's No Pants Friday. And if you are new to the show, uh, No Pants Friday, it's just basically like we have no agenda. We're just hanging out. We've been working all week. And it's just time to, we don't really have to prepare a show. We just answer questions. So it's an AMA, ask me anything if you're on Reddit. That's what they call them, AMA. Um, kind of a Q&A. So if you have any questions for us, whether it's selling related, uh, personal, fun, whatever, we will answer your questions. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and ask whatever you want to know. Um, we just got done. We went yard sailing. Mm -hmm. It's a verb. Yep, yeah, it's a verb. So yard sailing. Some people spell it S A I L I N G, and some people spell it S A L E, and then an I N G. I actually looked it up, and like both, it's not because it's not really like a real word. It, so but it's, it's like a sail. Word. S A L E is the word. S A I, I L is not correct. But, but the idea is that when you're doing it, when it's a verb, and you're going yard sailing, I can see, I can see it both ways. What do you guys think? They're not, Yards, that's not a real word. S A L E, and then it's kind of like a hyphen I N G because it's a fake word anyway. But at right. least use it properly. But if it's not, you're a real talking word, to the grammar police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that yard sailing is not a real word. I'm so aware. in the creation of the word, you could hypothetically have it be S A I L I N G because it's like an action. You're going well, you out yard sailing. You could take the E off, like Dee Dee says, you know, yard sailing. And that's, you know, I'm with I'm you. I'm just saying. So uh, Debbie, the uptown bug, has one of our first questions here. And mm -hmm. she's like, do you use a virtual assistant as well as Dana? I guess that's for me because I use Dana. Yeah. Um, do you know of a good virtual assistant site? And can you talk about how it works? To be honest with you, my answer is no, I can't. Uh, neither one of us have ever used a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of don't get the concept personally. I think by the time you send them your photos, your measurements, and your description, you've already written 70% of the listing anyway. So I'm, I don't quite get it. I can see for using it for cross posting or using them. Like, let's say you're like, we were talking about Poshmark the other day. Yes. With Casey. Yes. Um, somebody that just share stuff. So I, it does make sense to me. I, it makes sense to me to use it for cross posting to different sites. Like uh, right now, Dana is doing not as well. She's doing it virtually because she doesn't need to be here. She's doing it from her house. Um, cross posting some of my vintage stuff, vintage stuff on Etsy. People that use virtual assistants to share their closets and do and cross post on Poshmark. I totally get that part. Mm -hmm. I do 
not understand the virtual assistant aspect of, and I know many people do it successfully, so I'm not knocking it. I just personally don't understand it. I think by the time you've, you've sent them the photos uh, or taken the photos and put your measurements in, then I don't understand what there is left for a virtual assistant to do. You've got 75% of the work done already, so why would you pay someone else to do, finish it? That's, I don't know. That's my thought on it. So, uh, you know, I can kind of get it though. Like if you, if you do all your pictures, so they automatically, um, sync up to like Dropbox or something like that. And then you do like what Teresa does where she has like the dry erase board mm -hmm. where she fills in the measurements and maybe whatever, you know, I could see how you could streamline that and train somebody else to create the actual listings. But I mean, it, it certainly is a process. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I'm sure that there's a way that you could change the way that I do my process it doesn't work for me. That's, that's all. Yeah. Like I love, I, I love Dana. I'm lucky to have her, I, you know, she is a successful seller on her own, uh, you know, in her own yeah. right. And, and, you know, I think I've trained her really well. Um, I'm hoping she never moves away <laughs> and she still needs extra money once in a while to help me out because um, I don't want to train anyone ever again. Yeah. Uh, she's my first attempt at an assistant and it was so successful that, um, I'd be screwed if I had well, to find another one. <laughs> now that eBay is going to be coming up with the back office thing, hopefully in the first quarter of next year, that should open the door for more people to try out virtual assistants. Uh, Christy Ann just showed up late Ooh. and said, what did I miss? Uh, you missed me talking about the fact that our friend Johnny Rocks um, actually recorded the That's What Pants Are For song. We couldn't really hear the lyrics very well. So we don't have, hopefully in the future we'll have a version of that to play. But here, I'm going to play this one more time real quick just for Christy Ann because... I feel like Christiane's like a little more invested in the whole No Pants Friday theme song than the rest of you guys are. So thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is for Christiane. No Pants Friday. No Pants Friday. No Pants. No Pants. No Pants Friday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, anyway. Um, so Debbie asked another question. If she's going to hire a temp help to get rid of her piles, what kind of payment would you suggest? I can only tell you what I did and I can tell you what a few other people I know do. So when I started Dana as an assistant, she was just taking photos for me. So for taking photos, um, I paid her $10 an hour. And then once I taught her how to list and she was doing, you know, one day photos and one day listing, um, I upped her $12 an hour. Um, so, you know, and then it's 1099, so, you know, no tax is taken out. Yeah. So it, it's a pretty decent. And then the other thing is that most people, from what I hear, the average going rate is about $1.50 to $2 per listing. And that's start to finish. That's photo creation up to mm -hmm. put it in draft or, or make it go live. So, um, yeah. I, you know, I guess, I guess you'd have to talk to someone who has done it more or who has, you know, hired listers. Um, you know, a lot of people use their assistants for lots of different things. For me right now, Dana is just doing photos and now she's cross posting to yeah. Etsy. I don't have her doing any listing for me, although I did have her listing while I was on vacation, uh, while I was at camp because I wanted to keep my store active. So she did list about 30 or 40 items for me that week, which was great. Um, but in general, I, you know, now that we're getting into Q4 soon, I will probably have her working you know, uh, 10 to 15 hours a week, as opposed to the four hours a week she's been working the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Cindy had a question. I'm getting ready to list my first items on eBay, three snapback hats. Uh, and she wants to know um, how to ship them. So I, I try to ship all hats and boxes because you don't know like how particular somebody is about their hats and some people collect hats. And honestly, you can, I'm, I'm trying to see if I had any of these boxes up here. eBay, yeah, I use the boxes. Those are the ones. This is it right here. This yep. is it right here. So this particular size, this is it's on the other side. Okay. This is an eight by six by four. I like this one because it is perfect to put a hat in and weigh eight ounces. It weighs eight ounces with the hat in it usually, unless you have a hat usually. with like, you know, metal accoutrement. Yeah. So usually I can get a hat in here and it's only eight ounces, and that's actually the you know super cheap. Send it first class. The buyer is happy because their hat was is not smooshed. Um, so that's personally how I would do it. But Hey, before we get crazy into answering questions, I want to talk about, we got some presents this week and I would we like to did. talk about the presents that we, we got. Did. We got presents in the mail, which is really nice. What did we get? Well, first we got presents from Ryan and Allie, uh, rally roots. First of all, I want to talk about something here, guys. Okay. These are the hats, right? So these are the awesome, uh, rally roots hats. They sent us each one. Now what I, hold on, hold Yeah. You, 
look at this face. You see that face? You see the shame on that face right now? You don't know why, but that, that face, she's feeling a lot of shame, guys. She's feeling, yeah. she's feeling regrets uh, yep. and regrets, all those things. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the hat, which, you know, you guys have seen me wear hats. This is totally like the style I would wear she likes the anyway. Hat. Um, so I love it. So this is my hat, guys. Okay. My hat. Okay. We clear? This is my hat. Get it. Let's talk about let's talk about uh, Victoria's hat. Do you notice anything about Victoria's hat? What's you can't even see it. Yeah, you can't even see. It. What is that, guys? What's what's on there? What's on there? Is it possible? Wait, hold on. Are you licking my hat? <laughs> uh, uh, that tastes suspiciously like powdered sugar. I don't know what you're talking about. What what happened? There may or may not have been a donut in my hand when I picked the hat. She up. might, she might have got the donut on her hat. Anyway, uh, I, I like have, hat. I it. have respect for my hat. Okay, so I did not get any, I did not get any donut on my hat. But I mean, come on, guys, come on. I'm not a flat brim kind of hat person, yeah. but I am. So I think that works for me. And we got their um, awesome little keychains that they have, which are really super cool. And Allie wrote this cute little note on her little unicorn stationery. Yeah, super cute. Anyway, so we just want to say thanks to Ryan and Allie for sending these hats to us. We love you guys. I'm going to be sporting mine all the time, especially uh, whenever it gets to haircut time, because I always wait a good, I don't know, month before getting another mm -hmm. haircut. When so you'll, notice, really you'll notice that I'm like wearing hats in every video. All right, what anyway, else did we get? Pretty oh, excited about we that. We also got something from someone who's in the chat. Yes, our little friend, Kara Cooper. Yeah, what'd you get? Uh, she said first she sent a really really sweet mm -hmm. note, um, but she knows she pays attention. I like peacocks, and so she sent me this really pretty peacock ornament. It looks very. Um, I think she said it came from her tree. So it it came off of her tree, so it's uh, like a little almost like Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch style, but it's made of like raffia or something. It's really pretty, and I have a peacock Christmas tree that I keep up year round, mm -hmm. and that's going to go on my tree. Yup. And then she sent me this really pretty brooch. It's like a pin or a brooch. And because I wear the whole pin-up look a lot, I wear dresses and, and sweaters and things like that when I'm not dressed like a bum, um, I actually would wear this. I would wear a pin or a brooch. I have several, and I do wear them. They don't go with everyday T-shirts, but I definitely wear them. So she said the ornament is from the 80s. I love the ornament. And then I got pretty much the only kind of pants I like to wear, and that's pajama pants. And they're grumpy cat pajama pants, everybody. Look how comfy these are. They're nice and stretchy, so it's like, you know. They feel like super soft t-shirt material. Yeah, they're really nice. So this is pretty much the most awesome gift ever, Kara. Thank you so much for sending us presents. We love yeah, them. Yeah, thank you, Kara. That was and, very sweet of you. And here's the other thing. Um, somebody in this house likes to keep it real chilly. Listen, I have you guys, flashes. She's going through the change. Really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she keeps it really, she keeps it so cold. The other night, I literally got the Snuggie out, and I was inside the Snuggie. Both the dogs were under the blanket and in, in the Snuggie with me while she was off to the side, like, trying to cool down. So anyway. She said show the tag. Kara said show the tag of the Grumpy Cat. Yeah, this is Grumpy Cat. So uh, licensed merchandise. So I will be, I will be wearing these when we're hanging out at night, and I'm for a reason. So. Listen, I'm just telling you, I'm just hot all the time, okay? So I can't seem to cool down, so I keep the house at like 70 degrees with the air conditioning on. And 70 degrees in the desert is... I live in Vegas. I shouldn't be cold. shivering. Come on. Come on. Anyway, uh, okay. Yeah, Christiane says that was an unfortunate donut incident. Yep. I mean, that was powdered sugar that could have been in your mouth, you know? Could have been. Could have been. You mm -hmm. lost it. Um, anyway, so Cindy asked about the hats. Should I figure around $4 for shipping a hat that way? I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's about there. $4. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like, I mean, I, I, you know, you can do whatever you want, but, um, especially for things that are under a pound that you're going to be sending first class, I would do free shipping and just build that into your price. Just add $4 onto whatever your price was going to be and have it be free shipping. Cause I'm telling you, there are people who check the little box and they only are going to see listings that have free shipping. And when it's something that small and light, I think that's a smart way to do it. So, Susan, bite your tongue. She says, get used to it, Vicky. Last about 12 years. Listen, I'm only 43. I started real early a few years ago to begin with. So if this lasts 12 years, somebody's going to get murdered. <laughs> murdered. 
Um, anyway, okay, so go ahead. If you guys have more questions, bring them on. Um, I will say, yeah, ask any questions that you have. I am going to do one other thing. I got contacted by uh, a seller. Her name is Rhonda. She goes by Ron Dazzle. Right now, Ron Dazzle is at work, so she's not watching live. But she did want to know, because um, I talked about how I wrap, I saran wrap my shoes when I ship them, um, especially because with shoes, I always do them uh, uh, cubic um, priority because it is cheaper that way. And she wanted to know how I wrap them because I think I have a video that's all about cubic shipping, but I think I already had them wrapped. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just going to show real quick, but I have this stuff. I really need to find the link. Um, I get it on Amazon. I think I get them like in a four pack. Uh, this is like super handy. It's pretty, pretty inexpensive. Um, and it lasts mm -hmm. quite a while. I use it all the time. So for all my shoes. Oh, we got a Keith Curly poke in there. What? Keith Curly, what's happening? What's happening? Keith Curly, he's my, uh, Keith is my hiking buddy and record uh, shopping buddy, which Keith, we actually went out and we did a bunch of garage sailing today and we both bought records. Oh, Keith, don't go anywhere. Tell me that you're still there. I'm going to show you real quick. Check out what I got. Check out what I got. I think you'll be excited about yeah, this. I probably will like this one. Metal on Metal, Anvil. And this is a special Please tour sale. album, not for sale. sale. So I haven't done I haven't done my research on it yet. Uh, Vicky did look really quickly. So any, for anyone that doesn't know, this is kind of a somewhat obscure Canadian uh, metal band. They have a really interesting story. They actually have a documentary. I think it's just called yeah. Anvil, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there's a documentary called Anvil. It's really super interesting. Um, but yeah, oh, Keith just said, OMG, cool. OMG, cool. Uh, but Keith collects records, especially uh, metal stuff um, from the 80s. And, and so I figured he would be super into this one. Right and if here. you happen to be in the Las Vegas Valley area, Keith is the very best car detailer yeah. in the Valley. He's been doing it for a long time. If you want to go record shopping or hiking or have your car detailed, Keith Curley is your man. Mm -hmm. So... There you go. Anyway, so I just sold these uh, these right here. They are, I believe, football cleats. Um, bought these bad boys at Ross for eight ninety nine. They were uh, on sale because they're like huge, size sixteen. Um, and so I'm just going to show real quick how I would wrap these bad boys up in order to ship them. So hopefully I, I will be able to do it super smooth. So you guys will be like, wow, she really knows what she's doing. See, for me, it's really awkward. I've got to like smush half of it on the counter and I, you need like three hands to do it well. But Kind of, yeah. But see, look, I get, you got to get your little start going. And once you get your start going, then it gets a lot easier. And then they're stuck together. Okay. So seriously, like I don't put shoes in boxes at all because it just adds weight. Sorry, this is a little bit noisy. But I wrap these bad boys up. You can do a pretty good job. Make sure you get the whole thing. And then you can just put these in a poly mailer. And when I put it in a poly mailer, I actually tape down, like I get it as tight as I can in the poly mailer. So I like tape down, like I fold it over and tape it down so it's like a solid package. And then I do um, cubic priority. Now these shoes are going to Oregon. So hold on a second, it's kind of noisy. So I got it all wrapped up. So these are actually going to Oregon, which from here is not that far. So actually just based on priority, they would be, I think, uh, 822 is how much it would cost to send these straight priorities. They're like just under three pounds. Um, but even with uh, it going um, just to Oregon, cubic priority, I'm going to be able to save probably about 75 cents which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's just for something that's being shipped relatively close. Mm -hmm. If this was going to um, New York, uh, I'd save a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, I, I actually started shipping my shoes the same way. The only shoes that I take a little bit more care in shipping are um, if they have high heels, just because heels can snap off or they can you know, get damaged if I'm putting it in a poly bag. So I do generally use boxes yeah. for, for heels, but any type of sneakers or flats or anything that doesn't fit into a, um, a padded mailer, yeah, I'm using. I'm doing it. It works really way. well. And uh, somebody, um, Brenda said, "Have I had any negative feedback on this?" No, because these are shoes. Like I have them listed as um, you know, new without box, so they know they're not coming in a box. And part of like me wrapping them up like this and then putting them in the poly mailer and wrapping that up tight is it's like a solid package. It's not like they're just like lying around inside yeah. of something. Um, there's no reason. You know, they're really well protected. They're not getting. 
it's like I because I wrap them like this, I control like what gets smushed where basically. It's so it's like I can keep it in a solid state so that they're not just getting um, thrown around. And so I've never had anyone. Uh, question here: Somebody said, "How do you do cubic?" There are a couple of videos on this. Katie has uh, talked about it more than once about how to do cubic ship cubic shipping with Fit Shipper. Yeah, um, you can also use pirate ship. Pirate ship. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you just go back and look at my videos, you'll see I, I have one that's just for um, cubic priority. And yeah. so I'm telling you, if you do shoes, if you sell shoes at all, you absolutely need to be um, using cubic because it, you know cubic works for a very specific. It's, it's not too big of packages, but shoes are like perfect because a lot of shoes, especially with, with men's that I do, they are going to fit in like a flat rate box. And even that, even if they did fit in the flat rate box, uh, they would cost a lot more that way. Yeah, the stretch so. raw, uh, the stretch wrap Katie bought in a case of, I think it was six or there eight of them. them. Four of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can find them at Walmart, but you can also find them on, I think they were on Amazon. I got my Amazon. She'll pop a link in on the bottom of this video of where to get the stretch wrap. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, and yes, Brenda, I do. Uh, any shoes that I have that are not in their box. I do have some shoes that I bought in their box that I sell in their box. And those ones I can't. Um, for the most part, they're probably too big for cubic. But uh, yes, anything that I have not in the box, I wrap them up like that. So it works really well. I think we're uh, up to up on, caught up on the questions, actually. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so we went and I went yesterday and I went to like, well, no, I went to all six savers. She did. Because I went to five. And then I went and had tacos because you guys stop at tacos. And then I went to the sixth one. So I went to all six savers yesterday. I got like a ridiculous amount of t-shirts. I got some awesome jackets. Um, I'm actually pretty, I even got her shoes. I'm super excited about uh, Sunday's haul. Yeah, we both got some really good stuff. I got some really good stuff today, actually. Um, garage sailing. I had I had a good garage sale day. I spent less than $100. And I'm thinking I probably have close to $1,000 worth of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's always a good day. And well, we went, so we went to garage sales today. That was really fun. And I found, hold on, I want to show. Seriously, I found some cool stuff. I love this it's soundtrack to Metropolis' old silent movie, but it's like a bunch of 80s. Uh, it's like Freddie Mercury, Pat Benatar, Bonnie Tyler, silent Lover movie? Boy. Yeah, it's like it's from the original. Um, the movie is from like the 20s. This is just like. It was like they recorded a whole soundtrack for the original movie. All right. Um, but it's like it's actually one of my favorite like old school German sci-fi movies, uh, Fritz Lang, and obscure. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. And then wait, oh, you guys, it gets so good. Check it out. Bismarcky, just Did a friend. You say he's just a friend. Look at oh, how baby. Look how sad Bismarcky is. You got what I need. They'll <laughs> sing that one. Uh, and then I got Candyman knocking boots. Ooh, boy, I love you so. Never, ever, ever, ever gonna let you go. Once I get my hands on you. Ooh, boy, I love you so. Never, ever, ever, ever gonna let you go. I hope you feel the same way too. Girl, I do. You alright? Am I gonna make yeah, some come out your nostrils? Hmm. Anyway, all right, so there is a question here. Mary said, I had a store, my sales tanked, had to end the store because of money. Now, no store. Um, how do you start over? And um, one listing at a time. Yep. That's really it. Um, that's what you do. Start over. You don't need a store to start listing initially. Um, I wouldn't get a store until you at least get up to around 100 listings or so. Um, well, I mean, now they have the starter store, though. They do. They and do. it's super cheap. And even the month to month is only like, I think it's like seven ninety nine. I think, if you do it month to month. So, I mean, if you want to start out and be able to play with stuff like sales and things like that, like, I mean, it's it's a pretty pretty low investment. But. All right. Can you. Uh, what's going on? Get rid of that. This guy. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you need more questions? Let's see. Um, no, I mean, I think that that's a, a just just start listing, uh, Mary. Just do your first few listings, see how it goes. You really, that's the best way to start. You just have to keep going. Yeah. Um, and then when you get to enough listings that you feel like it makes sense economically to open a store, then that's what you do. Uh, you can have uh, very inexpensive stores now. There's the, the entry store, then there's entry level store, then there's the basic store. And then once you get up over around, I don't know, 300 or 400 listings, and you want to get into like the premium, the premium. store, which is $59.95 a month. But other than that, the other other two are very small. Yeah. 
pretty much. Uh, Drummer wants to know if we're loading up for Q4. Yeah, when we did uh, Wednesday's show, we were talking about our goals for the fourth quarter. And so mine is, let's see, right now I'm, I'm at about 1650 in my eBay store. I want to get up to 2000 That means, like, let's say I didn't sell anything. I still have to get 350 more listings. Plus, I'm going to be selling stuff over the next almost two months because this is uh, October 1st is, like, kind of my goal. So really, I probably have to list, like, I don't know, like at least 600 more things in the mm -hmm. next two months. Um, so that's a lot. So that's why yesterday, like I haven't been um, doing hardcore sourcing like much over the last couple of months just because it's summertime and it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit slow. And so yesterday was like the first time I went sourcing by myself in like a while. And so I went and got like a ton of stuff. So I really need to ramp that up. And then I also want to like double my Etsy store from about 300 to at least 600 listings. Um, so those are my goals. So I'm definitely doing that. But Red Neckerson's resales just did a super chat. Oh, I guess that means you have to say. Let's it. get ready to super chat. Super chat. Super chat. It's super chat. Hey, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough. <laughs> um, that's okay. only for a dollar eighty-eight. Just imagine what would happen if it was more. right. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We've got here what happened to the video when you help the seller organize their items. It's coming up next week. Um, we're waiting. Mm -hmm. We're going at some point next week to her house to help her. So we just announced um, it last week. Lorna is coming on happened. what, Tuesday? Tuesday night. So Lorna is going to get here Tuesday night, which is what, 14th, I think? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just throwing, I'm pulling numbers yes. out, of my, out of my butt here. Uh, so she's coming on Tuesday. She's going to be here for a week. So we don't know exactly like what days we're doing. We're going to have a regular show. So Wednesday, Boss Up and List, we'll have Lorna on, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, she'll be on the show Friday and Sunday as well. But we'll be doing pre-recorded videos um, showing what we're doing uh, as far as Dorothy's um, stuff goes. Yeah, one more but, quick question before we acknowledge that next super chat is um, the question was how do you negotiate at yard sales a bu bundle? Somebody already answered it. A couple people answered it in the um, in the chat. I got a super chat to me. I can't, talk. I can't do it. I can't stop doing it. It's the super chat. Yeah. Karate chat? What yeah. is going on? <laughs> Le Le Leo Men? Just gave him five hours. <laughs> you gonna be okay? From Las Vegas. <laughs> Ooh, from Las Vegas. Awesome. Thank you for Hi, the neighbor. super chat. <laughs> All right, I, I apologize for. <laughs> She's been assaulting me with these super chats. Seriously, people. Thanks. Any, anyway, so what were we saying? I was saying when you're at a garage sale and to, to negotiate, the best thing to do is just exactly that. Make up, make a bundle. Mm -hmm. uh, of stuff. Just say, okay, I'm looking to buy all this stuff. It adds up to blah 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 blah. And would you take whatever? That's. Yeah. I mean, you're just gonna ask. You can't get a discount if you don't ask. But yeah, but don't sit there and do it with each item. Like it is a better idea mm -hmm. to kind of put the bundle together and have a whole bunch of stuff. So for sure. Um, Latanya wants to know, uh, says that she loves watching us. Thank you, Latanya. Thank you, thank you. Um, what does uh, Red Neckerson resale say? Wait, 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 what? Am I wrong to treat and pack my cheaper items just like they were higher dollar? No, I, I package all my stuff exactly the same way. Yeah, me too. So I don't sit there. Um, I don't worry about it, but okay, let's go back to Latanya. Uh, wants to know if we have any suggestions for buying wholesale items or where to wholesale from. Um, Neither one of us do wholesaling. Well, but that's not entirely true. Uh, so there's a couple of things. Part of it is is about, why are you looking at me like because that? Because you don't do wholesaling. I don't, no, I don't do wholesaling overall, but I have wholesaling sources. Those jerseys I got were from a company that I have a uh, right, right. right now where I can get wholesale stuff from them. So. As far as wholesaling goes, yes, there's companies that do it. A lot of it just has to do with making connections and getting to know people. And once you start to meet people who have businesses where they do wholesale. So like I do, you know. Someday I'll answer a question, I promise. You said we don't do wholesale. So we do. I have a question. I have an answer. Obviously, there's lots of ways you can do wholesale. But for instance, there is this, uh, like we had connected with those people on Main Street that do streetwear like I do and he does wholesale as long as you do like a minimum order of like $500. Um, but a lot of that is just about making connections and going to things like ASD market week. You meet people that uh, companies that do wholesale. Um, there's lots of different ways. To the do best that, way but. to do it honestly is to uh, start knocking on doors. Uh, yeah. No one is going to give up their wholesale sources to you. Um, it, they're usually hard won and hard fought for people to find them in the first place. It's a very common question. Anyone that's getting into the resale industry that's, that's 
been the question I've probably heard the most over the past yeah. 15 years of selling online as where do you get your items? Where do you find your items? Nobody's going to tell you that. Um, it, realistically, uh, why would anybody give you their, their wholesale resources? But the best way to do it, you just start knocking on doors, yeah. um, in the internet, start making phone calls, sending emails, start with, places around you because if you can physically go into a location and ask them do they have dead stock do they have back stock do they have stuff that was last season that they need to get rid of are they looking to get rid of uh you know an overabundance of an item or 10 items or something like that that's really the best yeah. way to start um, now when i think of wholesale i don't just think of i bought 40 cases of chapstick and i'm going to make five cents on each one like there yeah, are there thing. are companies like in LA. There's multiple companies um, that do wholesale T-shirts, like vintage T-shirts. So what they have is they probably have people who work for them who go out and actually do the thrifting and then sell them, you know, big big batches of vintage T-shirts for I don't know however much. And then they turn around and they sell them to people like me, where I'm willing to pay, let's say, five dollars a T-shirt. I mean, just pulling that number out of nowhere. Um, so there's, it's not just in wholesale doesn't just count for new stuff. It also is for used stuff. And there's also just, this is where I say like people who are weird about not telling people what they do for a living. Like they come up with some weird fake title because they don't want people to know that they're a reseller. This is where it matters that you should be telling people all the time what you do, because the more people that know what you do, the more likely they're going to be like, Hey, I just had like all this stuff come in and I need help getting rid of it. Can I you can't, help me? I can't look at this still thing. I've got two lines here. I'm sorry. That's what's the problem. You want me to read the chat and there's two lines. What do you I mean there's two lines? Me. I don't know what's happening guys. Anyway. Um, uh, I don't, I can't see anything. So you have to answer the questions. Okay. Um, so anyway, but that's where like talking to people and letting them know what you do is going to open doors and you're going to have opportunities and somebody's going to come along that like, you might meet a guy who does, uh, you know, um, storage units for a living and he needs somebody he needs to offload all those clothes off of too, you know? So I don't know, whatever. That's like a really long answer. Um, Chris Lee from Orlando asked, um, are you guys doing free returns? And if so, how is that going? Um, yeah, we, we are both doing free returns. Katie sells mostly men's clothing, well, well only men's clothing mm -hmm. uh, and shoes. So her returns have not changed at all. Um, they haven't gone up, I don't think. Nope. So she has not seen any difference. I sell a, a great deal of women's clothing as well as all different types of goods, men's clothing and hard goods. And I have seen a significant increase, I, I have to say. I've seen a, my returns are about three times what they were four months ago. Yeah. So I've definitely seen a difference and I don't love it. Um, I have not seen a correlation in sales going up. Uh, so it's something I'm still trying to evaluate if it's going to work for me in the long term. But it's also it really hard to something, say. It's, it's, too short, it's too soon for me to tell. Uh, it's only been about four months that I've been doing free returns. I don't think anyone can tell in that short of a period. Um, so I think I need to probably try it for a good nine months to a year. This is not what they expected to happen for sure. Um, I did have a couple of in-depth conversations with people yeah. in the returns department at Open. Um, so I guess it depends on what you sell and what your store is like, obviously. So I've got to take a quick look and see if it's something that's going to work for me in the long term. Maybe something I offer free returns on everything but women's clothing. I don't know. Um, I'm going to see where it takes me. So uh, as of right now, I'm not loving it. Yeah. And for me, it's been fine because like she said, I haven't really had any increase in, in returns. Uh, Drummer wants to know if we ever go to any live auctions near us. Uh, we don't. She used to do auctions all the time on the East Coast when she. I was did doing them here as well. Um, yeah, I've done here. Yeah, I've done. I did exclusively auctions um, on the East Coast, auctions and garage sales. And then when I moved here, same thing, for like the first year, year and a half that I was here, because I'd never been in a thrift store until I moved here. I had never thrifted clothing. I didn't. That wasn't my thing. I actually hated selling clothing. Um, so I did do auctions here. There are a couple of good auction companies here, but there is one specific one that I used to love that has gone entirely online. And unfortunately it's just not, doesn't work as well anymore. Um, I know Dorothy Panda finds goes to a lot of auctions mm -hmm. here locally. Um, she does. and I've been to the same ones that she goes to in the past, but it's been a, a few years. Um, I very, very infrequently do I find it worth my while. I mean, uh, there are a lot of resellers here and there are a lot of antiques dealers and antique booth dealers here in the Valley for a very small area. So, um, prices are driven up to where it, the margin is just not enough for me. You know, yeah. some people will operate on a smaller profit margin, but I, I don't care too. 
Yeah. Uh, Christiane says, I don't think free returns are realistic for small sellers, yet we are expected to comply. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. I don't completely, I know they're a hassle. And I know depending on what it is that you sell, they're going to be more than, like she has more than I do right now. But I do think that overall, like everything I've had returned in the past year, basically, I've been able to resell for more than I sold it for originally. Um, I know you, a lot of the stuff that you I have had, sometimes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I get it. I, I don't think it's going to put anyone out of business. I don't, I get that it seems kind of scary, especially if you're a smaller seller. Um, but I do think while maybe you haven't been able to see sales increase, it's hard to tell because you've got other things going on, like all the glitches that were happening that I think really did affect sales. Um, the whole changeover and how we can do, uh, we can't do sales for 14 days. Um, the summer slowdown, like there's all these different factors that kind of all kind of come together where it's like, who knows for all, you know, some of the sales you got, you did get because they saw that it was a free return. Right. You just can't account for that. It's really too hard to quantify. It's impossible. Um, so to me, the thing you can quantify is if you like, like what we've said before, if you are somebody that gets that 10% uh, discount for top rated seller plus, um, just make sure, you know, just pay attention to how much you're, you're paying out in return shipping and make sure it doesn't go over that 10% discount. And as long well, as mine has, yours has, mine has right. significantly. Uh, so, but you've been able to sell stuff for, for significantly more than the first time around. So it's like a couple times. Yes. So know. it has not, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, I'm yeah. not going to tell you something. That's no, I know it's not. For me, it is not working out. Uh, free returns does not make yeah. sense for me right now. Um, I'm going to continue doing it. I, I have not seen a benefit to it yet. I'm hoping that uh, changes. Because I have uh, such a long track history on eBay, I know what my sales are supposed to be like year over year over mm -hmm. year. So for me, I need to really compare it to my sales in general. So my sales are in general are way down this year from last year, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, doing the same thing, working harder, selling the same type of material, uh, same type of things. So I know it's not me. Um, the market has changed a little bit. And I think that part of that has been, you know, more marketplaces getting a little bit more popular. And I think part of it has been a lot of the glitches that we've had on the site, um, not just in the last month or so, but I think that we've had some pretty significant glitches and back stuff going on since maybe February or March. Um, that's when I saw a, a mm. big drop personally. So I'm kind of just struggling through this year like everybody else and see what I can do to, you know, make things better or make, or, and make changes. Um, so that's, that's really it. It's, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to blow smoke. It, that's, that's the reality. Um, you know, sales are down, costs are up. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to make it work mm. and we'll see how it plays out in fourth quarter. And then in this, in the spring. Yeah. Uh, Didi wants to know about my sales have increased doing free returns. Again, almost impossible to say because there's so many other factors. It, my sales are probably pretty much a similar uh, kind of flux that they usually are at this time of year. Um, so it's hard to say. My sales are up a little bit over last month. But uh, again, it's like, who knows? I, I don't know that they're up compared to sales before of mine, but I do know that because eBay has made it a priority and said, this is something we want you to do. And if you do it, you get to have your 10% discount. I know for a fact that having free returns does have at least some small impact on um, your visibility in the search. It's one of many factors, but it is right. one of them. So I know that even if I can't say, yes, I've had more sales, I do know I'm getting more visibility because of it. Um, and hopefully that does turn into more sales. But again, you're never going to be able to know why you've had more sales. Cause I mean, you would have to be like, I changed this today and tomorrow and every day after that, my sales went up 50%. It's like, we never have those kind of correlations that we can write because there's too many other things. It's too many on. factors. You really can't tell as, as it is, I'm going to do whatever eBay suggests as, as best practices and what they're saying that they want, because that's how it, you know, the, the search algorithms work and that's giving you me the best, um, you know, option to, to sell, uh, yeah. sell my item. So a lot of people saying their sales are up. There's, um, that's great. I, I hope everybody's sales are up. Um, realistically, you know, what I consider low is considered pretty high for a lot of other people. So, um, it all depends on what your benchmark is for your, yeah. your earnings or what you're looking to earn or what you have earned in the past. Um, everybody's a little different. Some people are happy if they sell $500 a week and good for you. That's great. Mm -hmm. I, I would be, I would be on the street if that was what I was selling. Yep. I'd, I'd need another sugar mama. 
I think. So, uh, Brenda says at open, it was mentioned that sellers need to do away with the vintage items and start selling newer items. What do you think? I mean, I don't really remember them saying that exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, part of what sets eBay apart from other marketplaces like Amazon stuff is the fact that we do have like a lot more, I mean, obviously like Amazon has like used movies and music and like media and stuff like that, but you can't buy used clothes, something like, you know, vintage, like the, the, the niche that I'm in, you know, vintage men's clothing, like particularly streetwear. That's like super popular right now. You can't right. buy that on Amazon. You can't. So I, I, you know, I mean, I would say, I think that people are probably going to be better off if they do somewhat of a mixture, if you can. Um, obviously, you know, I do see lots of, lots of great sales on like used and vintage stuff during fourth quarter, but I do like having a mixture of like some newer stuff in there. So I do try to go and do like the Ross and, you know, uh, Burlington Coat Factory and stuff like that and get some new stuff in there. Um, but I don't, you know, I mean, that's, there's no reason why, why eBay would be wanting us to go away from vintage. No, it's the only place other than Etsy to buy vintage or used items. Uh, really, I mean, Poshmark, yes, that's that's just clothing for the most part, but and, and has nowhere near the traffic that eBay has, and uh, Etsy, the same thing. Etsy is, you know, um, vintage items, and, and again, not anywhere near the traffic as eBay has. So eBay is mm. pretty much the only ball in in town for our, um, vintage and used items. So I don't think that that's true that you need to get away from vintage or, or used. Um, I sell a significant amount of vintage items, and you know, occasionally I'll sell my stuff on Etsy that's vintage, but honestly, I sell much more on eBay. Yeah. Um, so I just don't think that there's a lot of other, I mean, I think, I options. think eBay definitely, I think eBay, the company, their goal is they want people to come to eBay for everything. Like they would want everybody to come to eBay to buy everything, whether you want to replace that, you know, vintage, uh, or antique China set that, you know, you broke apart. Right. It depends on what the vintage is. Like Brenda just mentioned, they mentioned the next generation doesn't know vintage. I think she meant no, not now. Um, I think you're right, but they do know vintage clothing. Vintage mm -hmm. clothing is different. It's huge. They're not the next generation or the, the youngins as we call them. No, people, my daughter's age, that's 25 and your kid's age. They're not buying vintage China. They're not buying vintage, um, linens but they're buying but they are buying vintage clothing yes uh and and they're buying tons of it they're buying vintage clothing 90s 80s and then they go even further back in the 70s and 60s because that type of clothing is always cyclical and always has signature pieces that are popular so i think you're correct in that uh but vintage clothing is always going to be a, a good seller yeah for sure it's just going to always change what it's going to be good at some clothing. point vintage, yeah. what what people are buying now well i don't know because clothing and like the quality of clothing is like really gone downhill. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, like they were doing stuff at open where they had like that whole feature of like, was it under, under $10 or under $5. And it's like to get people to come to the site because you can mm -hmm. buy a pair of glasses for $5, sunglasses, $5, free shipping, free returns, which sounds insane. And it sounds like they're trying to get us to the whole race to the bottom as far as prices go. But that's, I don't think that that's true. That's I only going to apply to Chinese stuff because I, I nobody think, can Yes, and I think Match what prices. right, and I think what that's all about is it's about getting people onto the site. So, like right now, I mean, I will admit when I think like, okay, I need to replace my phone charger, like I need to get a new charger charging cord, and um, I think automatically, oh, I'll just go to Amazon because I know I can get one for like five bucks, and it's going to ship in two days, and I'm going to do that. Well, I think what they're trying to do is get more people to see like, oh, I can actually go to eBay and I can get those those really cheap, uh, quick items. But once they're on the site, the more they're shopping on the site for these $5 items, the more likely they are to be like, oh, I'm going to go look at this other thing um, that I was looking for that costs more money um, and buy like a computer there, or buy you know a vintage jacket or whatever. And so it's all about getting the traffic into the site and keeping them around. Yeah. So... Um. So Lori asked a question, how do you approach pricing on an item without many comparisons? Today I posted a 1940s Paplum carton. Feels like it has a decent value. I don't like auctions. Curious what others do. Um, if there were no comparisons, I mean, one of the things that I would suggest you do is look at solds. Um, maybe subscribe to something like, um, if it's something you're selling frequently, it's vintage or, or antique or hard to find collectible items. Subscribe to Worth Point or Terra Peak. Uh, which are two paid services that go back a um, number of years mm -hmm. on solds. So you're always going to find the item on one of those two sites because Gears is not the only one that's ever existed in the history of existence, right? So you're going to find it 
that way. Yeah. Um, when I was selling only antiques and collectibles and vintage items, I relied very heavily on Terapeak to help with my pricing. Um, I very rarely do auctions. I don't think even buyers really like auction anymore. People want what they want and they want it now. Uh, nobody wants to wait seven days for an auction to end and then wait for somebody to package it and ship it. By that time, they could have found it and had it delivered four days ago. Yeah. Um, so I always price something high with the best offer if I don't know exactly. If you think it's something special, it could be something super special, uh, just price it like ridiculously high, have best offer. And if it is something special, then it may be overpriced, but you'll get, you'll, people will reach out to you. People will, you'll see, you'll get watchers, yeah. you'll get activity, you'll get emails, you'll get offers. Um, and you'll figure it out. And so, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't use auction anymore at all. Um, auction was something that worked very well for me for the first eight years or so that I was on eBay and then auction stopped working. I used to put every single item in auction every week. I would do two, 300 auctions and then whatever didn't sell an auction, I would then put in my store. Um, and I used to sell 60 to 70% of my items in auction. Yeah. Now, if I were to do that, I'd probably sell 5% in auction, if that. Almost all auctions, you're going to sell it for less than what you could sell it for by now. Yeah. Pretty much. Exactly. Um, let me see. What else do we have here? Uh, there was another well, question. Well, Red Neckerson's Resale says, in business, it's called loss leaders, having those really cheap items that bring That's people true. on the door. Mm -hmm. So honestly, because there were some people who Bring were, them on the site. There were some care. people who were upset about that whole thing, and they were like, oh, I was just trying to get us to sell a bunch of cheap crap. And I'm like, no, if I, if we want other sellers to be like the ones providing the loss leaders, like I'm down for that. Like, yeah, bring I'm them not going to sell that stuff, yeah. but that's fine. Bring them into the, on the bring site. Them on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty Yeah, good. now, like Elena said, I only do auctions for stable items. Yeah, that's pretty much. That's not a bad you're thing gonna, to you're, you're most likely, like it really, it really needs to be something special that, she there, uses instead of yard sales. That makes yeah. sense. So if you're going to start something at 99 cents and maybe add shipping just in case it sells yeah. for 99 cents, I think that's fair. The only thing that auctions are going to work for now, as far as like selling for a really high amount is it has to be something super unique that has huge demand that can be hyped across social media. Um, yeah, Allison, for the what's an auction? Yeah. yeah for the most part, eh, people want stuff and they want it now. So if there's somebody who has money to burn and you have that item and nobody else has it and you price it, and they want it back. There's later. rarely going to be um, an article of clothing or shoes that is going to demand an auction. So if yeah. you're using auctions, it's good for lots um, to get rid of stuff. Like people have said, that's 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 true. That works well. And then it's really good for rare or collectible vintage or antique items that you know um, may have a high demand. And you're going to know that by looking at solds, whether it's something you should put in auction or not. One thing about Terapeak. Um, the subscription service and, and they're not a sponsor or anything. We have no, no deals or codes or anything to, and they're not paying me to say this. Um, but one of the things that I like about Terapeak is that it tells you the percentage of items that sold in auction, the percentage of items that sold in a store. And they told you which one, which one sells for more money. Like, so say you've got a, I don't know, these red sunglasses, you put these in auction and there were 12 of them that went into auction and four sold out of a store and four sold you know, an auction, mm -hmm. um, it's going to tell you which one sold for more and whether it, so you'll be able to tell which way it should go, whether it should yeah. be auction or, or store item. In most cases now it's going to be store, yep. you know, or buy it now. Nobody, people, we live in a time now where buyers want what they want and they want it now. Yeah. So if they see like, Oh, it's up for auction. I got to wait seven days or I gotta wait five days. It's like, they don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Terapeak is pretty easy to get into. Um, if you go into Terapeak and look into product, um, product is the, is the drop down that you want to look into product sourcing or product something or other. And you're going to put your, uh, whatever you're looking for in and search, and then it's going to give you the 90 day sales history. And then it breaks it down to categories and new or used or all that kind of stuff. Uh, Terapeak covers Amazon and eBay. As far as I know, it may cover more. I'd have to check into that for you. Nancy, you can probably Google that faster than I can get that info information for you. I'm not sure since I only sell. Uh, on eBay and a little bit on Etsy. That's all I've ever used it for is eBay. So, mm -hmm. are you up for a tutorial, Vicky? Yeah, I could. I could. We could do a private tutorial. I'll Ooh, a private tutorial. It's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, Todd says, "Have you ever used the completely app to check sold listings on eBay?" You know what, Todd? Do you have an iPhone? Because somebody, I don't remember who it was. Somebody was showing me that completely app. 
And I tried to look it up on my phone, which is an Android, which I do prefer Android to iPhone to Apple, but I couldn't find the app. I I've think never it, heard of the app. I think it might be uh, just an Apple app, which if you if you guys out there have it, uh, I think it costs like a few bucks, doesn't it? But man, it is awesome. From what I saw, it was really cool. It showed like completed listings, like I think across different platforms, right? Um, mm. I remember it being really heard awesome. Of it. Yeah, somebody showed it to me at uh, Open, I think. And I was like, what? What is this? And I tried to look it up and I was like, eh. You said I think it's, <laughs> it's Apple only. It's only iPhone Why? now. $3.99. Yeah, like I would throw down $3.99 right now for it, but my phone won't work. So lame. Anyway, so yeah, if you guys have, if anybody has an iPhone, one time check, out, the check out the completely app because seriously, I saw it for like two seconds and I was like, I want it, I need it. And then I was you can't have it. real, real sad about it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Let's see. Do we have any other questions here? Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Barbara, I think that'd be a good thing. I think if you have an iPhone for $3.99, it's a one-time fee, get it. Yeah, Can't for hurt. sure. And then how do we get them to make us an Android version? What's up with that? Right? Who are these completely people? I don't know. Come on. Oh, yeah, and it's maybe it's just for eBay open, but uh, – or not eBay open, sorry, eBay only. Um, mm -hmm. That's okay for me. Yeah, Joshua, completely is really good. Thanks for rubbing it in, We're talking about how awesome it is and how we don't get to use it. Um, yeah, I don't know why they don't have it for Android. It's I don't know. To like cut well, out we can't ask, it. answer any questions about it since we've never used it. So Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Stacy at Right Brain Boutique said, did you see on the fall update, it looks like we won't get promoted listing credit anymore, only Anchor Store? Um, I did not notice that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't remember um, seeing that. I, I have about $200 a month or more in promoted listing fees. So honestly, that $30 wasn't helping me heck of a lot quarterly anyway. If that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I, I have about six or $700 in promoted listing fees a quarter. So yeah. 30 bucks. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Yeah. But what else? Um, An Android app that's not bad that's called What It's Worth. So I guess we could maybe try that out. What It's Worth? Josh said, I know the completely developer. Don't hold your breath for an Android version. Why? Thanks, okay. Josh. Okay. So, Josh, because you're a developer, because you're, you're a fit shipper, um, and you're the other one. What's the, the, the flip tools? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. I'm probably saying it wrong, and I'm totally giving you the wrong shout out. But anyway, you're a developer. Why would you develop an app for a phone and only, I mean, I know Apple is like half the market, but Android's like the other half the market. Mm -hmm. So, why, if you're selling, if you're actually, if it's already monetized and you're selling it, why wouldn't you put the work into making it for, I don't know. To me, that seems really silly. Tell, Selfish. Tell your, Selfish. tell your developer friend that uh, I'm going to take that $4, I'm going to set it on fire and flush the ashes down the toilet because your developer friend refused to take my money. Uh, Stacy asked, do you think promoted listings help your sales? Uh, I did in beta, but then I stopped using it. Yeah, I've been using promoted listings since the first beta program so like two and a half years now I think mm -hmm. um, and if I forget to renew or I forget to add new listings I definitely see a difference in my sales so yeah I mean it's costing me money but I'm getting I mean, it's more, more exposure because of it yeah it's getting in front of more more people's eyes um, higher up I mean it's just it's gonna exactly. work. I mean, it's just that's how any advertising works. It's gonna work. So yeah, it does. It does work for me. I use trending rates now. I used to use uh, flat five percent across the board. Uh, I use a combination of sales and um, and promoted listings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my sales are ten percent. Sometimes it's thirty percent off. And then uh, I use trending rates, which tends to be around an average of nine or ten percent for promoted listings based on my categories. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I sell, you know, probably about $2,500 a month is from promoted listings for me. That's my average. I don't know what mine is. I'd have to look. So uh, according to when I had my, um, I did a little story view for the first time at Open this year. I had never done it before because I know I follow best practices. So I knew they were going to be like, all right, that's good. That's good. But I wanted to see what they said. And actually, they gave me the average is 40% of my sales um, are from promoted listings. Crazy. So, whether or not I would have had those anyway, I don't know. So Josh says that it's a totally different skill set to develop for Android versus um, Apple. Yeah, but you can like hire somebody else to do it. Uh, but he's trying to convince them to give 
him his code so that Josh can make a web version, which would be, be cool nice, because Josh. I do all of my listing. We both do all of our listing at our desks on our desktop computers. So I would love for there to be a web version. I would totally use that. I would pay for it. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. This guy needs to get on it. Um, Definitely. Yeah. So let's see. Any other questions, guys? What's happening? I don't think we missed any. I don't think we did either. But whatever. How do, okay, so Big Drift Thrift says, how do I date a sticks... 1977 double sided baseball style concert tee with no tag and double stitching. I mean, you really, you kind of, it's you probably not a 1977 t shirt with not double stitching. No, it's not. Mm. Yeah, I've seen them in the 80s. I don't know about 70s. That's really tough. Does it, so is it, does it say, so, it, okay. So it's double sided. So it says it's from 1977. Is there any copyright information like the small print? Does it have that anywhere Next on to it? The picture or anything? Yeah, so like something along the edge um, that has a date. Uh, because I would, I don't know, I'd have to see pictures, but I don't know that I would feel comfortable with the uh, thinking that it's actually from 1977. I don't Unless know. you can find others that look a lot I don't like know. it. I'm not sure. Something like that, honestly, what I would do is I would probably list it on Etsy because. Um, I would list something like that on eBay because I would be worried that like it would get reported or something. And if I wasn't a hundred percent for sure that it was from 1977. Um, so, so Suzanne know. asked, does anyone put a link to their store using HTML in their description? Um, no. I do not. I don't believe that that is allowed any longer. I could be wrong. Um, check into that. That might not be HTML links are um, for a long time were not allowed in your descriptions. So that may or may not be allowed. I would double check that, Suzanne. Um, I do not do that though. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do oh, Stitch Witch wants to know if I like the 80s group, you too. No, I do not. Uh, it's not so much I don't like them. I just think they're super, super boring and I don't get the appeal. I just don't yeah. understand it. I'm like, eh. Too commercial. I'm not a fan. It's just, it's never been my kind of music. Not so. that I don't like some of the hits like everybody does. I mean, some yeah. songs, of course, they're okay, but yeah. Yeah, but it's just kind of, yeah. Uh, Drummer wants to know if I've ever come across uh, an Aberex bomber jacket, 1975. No, I've got, I've found Aberex before. I have an Aberex bomber jacket in my store right now. I don't actually. know if it's from 1975. Mm -mm. No, well, but they've been making jackets and still do for a long time. Yeah. They were um, a military contracted. Mm -hmm. uh, bomber mm -hmm. jacket company and now they make for retail as well kind of yeah. like your the one that you mentioned the other day uh thrift raider loves my shirt mm -hmm. thank you i love my shirt too i love the toxic avenger uh do i use videos for any listings where it makes sense i used to when they were a little bit easier to upload um and put the youtube link into your html i haven't in a long time i haven't since we changed out what was it about a year ago and we had to change all of our listings and get rid of all the active content so at that time, um, videos were not, you couldn't use them for a short period of time. And I know that they changed it so that you can use them again. I haven't in a while. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that, it, I mean, of course, if you want to do them, I definitely think that they they help. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got, I think that's Tim Taylor, T. Taylor. I don't know if that's Tim or not. Yeah. Um, you can use HTML, but not links. Interesting. Uh, Renee wants to know, do you think the percentage of markdown matters, like 20% off of $20 versus 50% off of 32? It's still going to net 18. You know what? Honestly, like everybody has their amount that they think works best for them. I know people who are like 17% off is my sweet spot. Yeah. And like other people are like, I like 70%. You know, so it really just depends. I liked it more when I could mark mine down 40% and 50%. Now I'm doing 10 and 15 and I do feel like it's, it doesn't sell as well. But again, a million factors to think about. So everybody's it's hard different. To say. I think having a sale on no matter what the sale is, uh, I think it's all about perception. I think buyer perception is that a sale means that they're getting a deal, whether they are or they're not. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just looks better to buyers. I think buyers are just more attracted to it in general. Yep. Um, what the percentage is, meh, I don't know that that necessarily meh. matters. Uh, Michael, what method do you use to shipping sh for shipping shoes when you have the box? Do you still use a poly mailer? Uh, um, I'll answer that. I do. Um, mm -hmm. I put the poly mailer on the outside of the box, and then I generally will ship it um, using Cubic. There is a Cubic um, shipping method for um, poly mailer, and it's based on the size of the mailer yeah. flat. And then you can put whatever you want in it. So um, I do the same thing. Yeah. 
uh, he says, I am Tim Taylor, but I think there are two Tim Taylors. Well, there's probably more than one, <laughs> more than two Tim Taylors. It's kind of a common name, I guess, but, uh, um, all right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it. I think, I think we're our, pretty much done, but listen, guys, seriously, we sourced so much stuff yeah. yesterday and today. I don't even think we're going to do our Sunday morning uh, trip to Sabres because we've already like, I think we're pretty much tapped out. Like we've got so much stuff to, to we may not be doing our Sabres to yeah. our, uh, Sunday morning. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. But you guys should totally come and watch uh, the Sunday live hall, which is on Sunday at 2 PM mm -hmm. Pacific standard time. Five got one more Eastern. question I want to answer. For okay. Rosa uh, before we head out. Yeah. Um, but anyway, make sure that you come and watch the, that show on Sunday. Cause we bought, we found a ton we got some of really cool stuff. stuff. A lot of really good stuff. Different stuff. A little bit different this year, this week. For yep. me, anyway. I get some different yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Rosie's Closet. <clears throat> I have a customer on eBay requesting a return. It is new with tags. She's saying that it has a hole in it. I know there was no hole. Do I have to take the return or she has taken the tags off? Well, it does depend on what your uh, return policy is in your listing. Um, if you say that you accept returns, then yes, you need to take it back. But when you get the return back, there is an option to refund less than the full amount. When you click on refund buyer, you're able to choose uh, one of the lines that you can choose is choose amount to refund. And you can keep money back. You don't have to give her the full amount. If it comes back yeah. to you and it doesn't have the tags, I actually did that this week. I had a customer that purchased a handbag from me. It was new with tags. They returned it without the tags at all. Which is like, why would you take the tags um, off? They didn't even put Weird. the tags in the pocket and return it. So I deducted 25% from their refund yeah. and that was it. Um, I just said you returned it without tags and it was sent to you new with tags and now you've devalued the item. So therefore you're not getting all your money back. How dare you devalue the item? So it's my business, just like this is your business. You can choose how to run it. Um, if you're, if that customer does not return the item to you in the way that it was sent to them, then you can absolutely choose to not refund the full mm -hmm. amount. Um, they do not have to accept your re refund. They can challenge it with eBay, and then you can kind of battle it out with eBay. If eBay doesn't take your side or what have yeah. you, they look at the correspondence, they'll look at the pictures and that kind of thing. Ooh, so. Christy Ann says that she sniped a, a cool Union satin jacket on Posh and it just arrived. I want to see pictures, send me pictures so I can look at it and salivate over it. Uh, Lorna says that we need to save the sourcing for when she's We will be sourcing Isn't she going to be plenty. here? Isn't she going to be here for um, National Thrift National Day? Thrift Day? Mm -hmm. National Thrift Day is next week. You will be here for that. And that is the day we will be hitting all six Saver stores. Yes. So All of the Savers. You're going to have to eat your Wheaties that morning. Mm -hmm. Maybe a protein drink. We're gonna get some little snacks. Get our coffee. Put our Depends on and hit the road. Bring some almonds. Right. Something because I'm, I'm not stopping to go to the bathroom. Right, gonna we're go gonna right like strap pants. on like a like the that, that astronaut that right. drove across the country. Just like wear diapers. And, yeah, yeah. Just go right in the pants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, whatever. National Thrift Store Day is uh, next week. I think it's either Friday or Saturday of next week. I have to look that yeah. up. But um, personally, I want to get the suit like in Dune, like the book Dune in the movie. They have like those suits that they wear. And it like just recycles everything. All right, that's gross. So it's like you never you never have to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and you don't have to drink anything because it just dollar cycles. Uh, Karen says, are you concerned with bad feedback? Yeah, no, no. I have uh, one negative and one neutral on my account. Now they're both almost a year old. Um, I generally am around 100%. I sometimes will carry one. I mean, you can't stop all of my one negative that someone gave me for an item that they didn't receive back in December. And they negged me like two months later and I didn't even know they never received it. So nothing I could do about that. Um, and it was like wow. a ten, $10 item. Um, yeah. So, and that's, that's it. So you're occasionally going to get a negative here and there. You can't please everybody. No. Uh, DJ says I spent $150 and got like 52 clothing items, 47 pairs of shoes. That's a pretty good haul. Woohoo! That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, so, ooh, and Rosie's closet says I hope to run into you ladies at Savers. Well, Maybe are you, you local? Will. Maybe you will. Yeah. We're going to be hitting all Rosie's of them. Closet, I think I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like cracking my whip on these mm -hmm. girls because they're like the, uh, they like to do the two hours per savers. And I'm like 30 minutes and I am out. And so. <laughs> Max says it's on Friday. Which savers are you starting at? Just so I can hit mine before you get there. <laughs> nice try. Nice yeah. try. We're not going to reveal our strategy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yes, we'll see. Oh, Rose is on the east side. Rags is here in, in town as well. So we got a lot of, I got a lot of local people. I know. Are we going to be like getting together one last yes, year? Yes. We're going to, well, we I'm. Plan. 
I am going to try to do like a little lunch meetup type thing. So um, we'll announce it. Here, here's the thing. If you, if you are local, if you're in the Vegas area, make sure you're in the boss Facebook group, which the link to it is down below. Um, because I'm sure you'll probably say something there. Maybe you can. Yeah. I'm going to do there. an unofficial meetup. Um, not, you know, just to maybe get together so we can get to know each other. I mean, yeah. there's a bunch of people that we've met recently through the, doing this show or we met at open that are local that we didn't know were local that I didn't know were around before. And then people that we already know. So yeah. it looks like there's at least 15 to 20 of us, uh, maybe more. And so I just plan for some time during the next week or the beginning of the, mm -hmm. the week after that. Yeah, we'll try to do we'll it uh, something like in early boss. evening, late afternoon or something like that. So we'll I know some people do have, yeah, I know some people do have day jobs. So I'll yeah. try to. For sure. Big Drift Riff scored some vintage Harley Davidson tees the same. I saw your post on the Instagram. I okay. Did not, I, I did not look on the Instagram. Uh, is, is it Sherelle Ross? Cheryl Ross? Hello from Portland. First time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Catching us live. Awesome. Um, anyway, okay, guys, we could just keep going forever, but uh, mm -hmm. we got work that we need to do because we've been out having fun buying stuff, and we need to list some stuff, and we need to ship some stuff. And so, rags, yes, you can still come. Wait, I'm not on Facebook. Can I still come? Yes, you can still come. We'll we'll try to announce it uh, on a show, and hopefully, you'll see it that way. Well, and and uh, rags, why don't you send me an email? My email address is is down below, and I, that way I can give you the try to add you. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually I have, give the I have another friend that's not on, on uh, Facebook that wants to go yeah. too. So. so join the Boss Facebook group down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Make sure you hit the little notification bell so you know when stuff comes out. Give us a thumbs up. There's like 100 of you here. and There's only 30 thumbs up. So give the video a thumbs up if you liked it all right. Uh, and please come back and watch our show on Sunday when we'll be showing all the cool stuff that we found um, over the last couple of days and whatnot nice. and uh get yourselves back to work right now but make sure you have a good time this weekend doing something fun i don't know well i did my wine dinner last night with my girls yeah, so that was did. that was my fun well and, and tomorrow we tomorrow you guys sunday we might be a little hungover because tomorrow we're having like this whole day wine pool party at our friends mm -hmm. and it's like we're going to be drinking wine starting at two in the afternoon and then we're gonna like i don't know like crawl home or something. I think we're going to definitely going to be Ubering home. Yeah. Tomorrow. So we might be, so come watch the show on Sunday just to see us suffering. Just to see us that? drag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming and watching the show. Awesome. Bye.